Let's grow some crops and add a custom crop to Minecraft. Alright, we find ourselves back in the challenger once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding a custom crop block to the game. A crop block is actually a great example of the use of another block state property. So I highly suggest watching the tutorial that came before this as a refresher on block state properties because we're going to need them in this tutorial. So in our custom package, we're going to right click new Java class called the eggplant crop block. So we're going to make an eggplant crop here. And this will extend the crop block class in this case, not the block class. So we're going to hover over this create constructor matching super. And in theory, we are done. Now we're not quite done because if we actually middle mouse click on the crop block class, you can see that the age over here is an integer property. So it's just going to count integers and it's going to go from zero all the way to seven. So if we click on this, you can see it goes minimum zero all the way to seven. Our crop actually only goes from zero to six instead of seven. So we just have to, well, do a few other things here. So what we need to do is we need to make a public static final int property, this one right here called age equal to in property dot of passing in the name age, min zero and max six. There you go. Now, after we've done this, we want to overwrite three methods, the get max age method, where we want to return six. So this one needs to return exactly what we have in here. We also want to overwrite the get age property method and then return the age of this class. That's also incredibly important. And then last but not least, which is also important, we want to override the append properties method, calling builder.add, passing in the age once again. That's almost all we need. We actually need a fourth method. We need the seed method. So there's a method that is for the seed. So you can see get seeds item, and that is going to get an item convertible. Now what I'll do is I'll make a purposeful error over here because we've not yet added the seeds item. We're going to do that in a moment, but if I have this error here, then I'm going to be reminded that we have to add this. Let's first of all actually register the block in our mod blocks class. We're just going to copy over the lamp over here and that's going to be the eggplant underscore crop. And then same for the name eggplant underscore crop. And this is going to be a new eggplant crop block. Now this is very important. We actually want a completely different fabric block settings here. So we're going to say fabric block settings dot copy this one right here. And then we're going to say blocks dot wheat. There you go. And then we actually don't want to register a block, we actually want to register a block without a block item. So what we want to do is we want to copy the register block method here. And we're just going to call this the register block without item, then not call the register block item here, get rid of the tab parameter, and then call the register without block item, get rid of the item group here as well. And then we should be fine. Because in this case, the actual block itself doesn't have an item associated with it, the item is going to be the seeds themselves. So that is the general idea here. So for this, we now need to go to the item package in the mod items class. And let's copy over the eight ball. This is going to be the eggplant underscore seeds. And then same here, eggplant underscore seeds. Now this is going to be a alias block item. And the first parameter here is actually going to be mod blocks dot eggplant crop. So the first parameter for this block item is has to be the actual block that it refers to. And then here, we're just going to make the max count normal. So that is going to be fine. Uh, we're going to copy over the eight ball once again for the eggplant itself. So this is going to be the thing that we're going to harvest. So eggplant, and this is just going to be a normal item. However, the eggplant, of course, is going to be eatable. So we're going to call food over here with a new food component dot builder, very important dot and then we can specify a few things. For example, we can make a status effect when this is eaten, we can make this always edible meat, things like that. But we only want to call hunger with a four, let's say, and then the saturation modifier is going to be a four as well. And then very important at the end here, we want to call a dot build. So this builder has to be built and then this should be fine. Now, all of the code as always is going to be available to you in the description below, GitHub repository and individual just as well. So no worries at all. So now we've added the two items. We can now return back to our eggplant crop block and say mod items dot eggplant seeds and return those as the seed item. And that should be pretty much all that we need to do here. There's one more thing we want to do in the client over here. So we're finally using the client. We want to call the block render layer map dot instance dot put block mod blocks dot eggplant crop. And then the second parameter is the render layer dot get cut out right this one here. And this basically makes it so that our eggplant has 
that the texture is actually see-through. So that is very important because they are see-through in our texture. And if we don't set the render layer properly, then it's not going to work. All right, and then we get to the crazy things, and that is going to be the JSON files. So let's actually start with the translation first, because that's going to be a little bit easier here. So we have two things that is going to be the eggplant itself. So this is just the eggplant. So this is the actual item that we're going to be able to eat. And then we also have the eggplant underscore seeds. There you go. And this is going to be the eggplant seeds. Now we can still add the eggplant crop over here. This is going to be eggplant underscore crop. And then this is just going to be eggplant crop. Now this actually should not be visible at the moment in our project. However, if you, for example, add something that adds a hover over effect, when you hover over different blocks, then this is going to be shown. So that is why you probably still want to add this. And now copying over some JSON files. Once again, those are all available to you in the description below, starting with the eggplant crop over here. So you can see we just have different variants depending on the age of the actual block. That is all that there is to it. And then we're just pointing to different block models. While at the first glance looks quite complicated, when you actually think about it, isn't anything that crazy. This does mean that we have seven different block model JSON files. And yes, those are still all available to you. Now, once again, those are really, really simple in terms of their contents. If we actually take a look, you can see... The, we actually have a different parent over here, block slash crop, very important. And then the textures actually point to the crop here. Texture that it points to is just eggplant underscore stage zero or the stage zero. And what will stage one be? Well, it will just be stage one. So very much, it just counts up. Nothing too crazy over here. But yes, this also means, by the way, that we have seven different textures here. This is also the case, but no worries at all. Let's actually get those. And then when it comes to the item model files, we only have one for the eggplant itself and the eggplant seed, but those are normal item model files. You can see they just point to the item texture, which we're also going to copy over. And then we have pretty much all that we need, except for one other thing, which is very interesting indeed. So there we go, the textures here as well. And now the question is, well, okay, but now my crop grows, all of that is great, but how do I get you know, certain things to drop from it. Well, we need, of course, a loot table for this. Now, I will copy this loot table over. I highly suggest taking a look at this as well. This is, of course, also available. And this is a little more complicated, but you can always go to the external libraries all the way down to this one right here, Minecraft Project, Merge, and so on and so forth, to the data folder, Minecraft Loot Tables Blocks, and search for the Wheat Loot Table and take a look at this. It is almost exactly the same. You can see we're looking for a certain condition, and that is that the age is max age. In the terms of, for wheat, it has to be seven. For our crop here, it actually only has to be six. So that is where you need to change this. You then need to change the block over here. That is the correct block. Here come the seeds. Here is the actual, well, thing you harvest. And then down here, we have some more seeds that drop, and that is pretty much all that there is to it. I highly suggest going through this slowly, methodically, taking a look at this. This really isn't that crazy. It looks pretty crazy, but when you really think about it, you only need to change a couple of things in these files, and then you should be totally fine. After having added all of this, let's go into the game and see if it works. All right, finds us in Minecraft, as you can see, the seeds and the eggplant has been added, so let's just try to put them into the ground, and there we go, we can plant them, and we can even make them grow with bone meal. So there you go, they are fully grown now, and if I destroy them, there we go. Now, be sure to destroy them, not in creative mode, but in survival mode otherwise it's actually not going to work so we can actually take a look at this as well you can see then it's not going to drop anything so keep that in mind and then let's also see if we just you know take a little bit of damage over here and let's also make sure we're on easy then we can actually eat the eggplant as well and that should pretty much be all that we need there we go and then let's eat it and there we go, restored some hunger and everyone is happy about it. So everything working completely as you expect it to. And that is how easy it can be to add custom crops to Minecraft. And this concludes this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you'll learn something new. I'll see you all in the next tutorial. So, yeah. Mm -hmm.